welcome to today's episode of CLCI Live, brought to you by the award-winning and ICF-accredited school, Certified Life Coach Institute. Sit back, relax, and enjoy today's episode. It's the Tuesday before Halloween. Welcome to... No, this isn't before Halloween. This is just for funsies. <laughs> yes, why we normally... Put water have. over myself. Oh, no. Giant we do this every week at meeting. We all dress up in our own costumes. Yeah. Yeah. That's what happens with regularity. <laughs> Secretly, I'm just the Joker, and, and Anthony's a giant baby. <laughs> um, no, I'm actually a man who chooses to dress like a baby. <laughs> man baby. Mm-hmm. Man baby. Who said that? Uh, Wasn't that Arnold Schwarzenegger that said something like that? Man baby? Yeah. I have no clue. Have no Drum, clue. who are you? I enjoy Candyland way too much. I, am I love Candyland. Man. And do not mind me if you see me snacking a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lisa, who are you? I wish food I have came no with idea. my costume. <laughs> my costume did not come in, so I guess I'm the queen <laughs> of them all. <laughs> She's uh, the queen of CLCI. No options there. Who are we talking about? We're talking about taboo, weird, and oddball coaching styles and techniques and business plans. So I thought it was appropriate that I today we could be weird, right? Today, yeah, we're gonna, this is going to be easy, laid back, weird. You know, we're talking about the weirder side of coaching. I'm having some. Uh, there we go. Okay. In so just room. to be aware, some some adult back. content, not bad. It's just you know we're going to be talking about some things that um, different kinds of niches that are out there. So some of it's going to be definitely adult terminology. Just a disclaimer out there now everybody's interested no, i'm just kidding well, now that we did the disclaimer we can also curse in our life because we already oh, yeah oh. we're gonna drop f-bombs everywhere ah, mm-hmm. ah. So, okay <clears throat> let's well let's is it brooke it just disappeared she absconded so yeah. let's talk about um sort of the first sort of uh taboo topic in coaching death and mourning. Yeah. Well, what do we think about when we say taboo coaching? What does that mean really for you guys? Not frequently visited as far as what majority of the coaches are wanting to call themselves. Okay. I want to say stuff that's, you know, verboden stuff that's um, you probably shouldn't coach about normally. Mm. Foreboding. Uh, If we're talking about (laughs) death and mourning, you know, that's really heavy for some people. You might want to see a therapist about a lot of the topics involved in death and mourning. But some of the stuff I read suggests otherwise. Um, there's a lot of practical, goal-oriented stuff that people need coaching on as far as death is concerned, like who's going to take care of an estate. So they call that a grieving coach sometimes. There's there's a plentiful of grieving. There's plenty, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm talking about the folks who, who are reaching out yes. to, to the afterlife. Oh, oh. Yeah, I'm essentially right. <laughs> oh. I actually woo-woo. took an entire We're class. talking woo-woo language now. Mm-hmm. It's also, oh, though, you know, if we want to get serious, it's also, if we want to get serious, also, though, is a little bit, um, it, there is some taboo behind the concept of coaching anybody really selling services to anybody who is in mourning um mm-hmm. because it, it is a space that is where somebody might be easily manipulated so funeral directors oh my god yeah. but I, they, you know, they have a they serve a purpose i don't i mean but then maybe they do i don't know I've, just, I've heard a lot of horror stories of funeral directors like guilting people like hey like you should probably get the better coffin you know oh like, my the god one <laughs> it's well... the So if we're talking about what you just talked about, Brooke, about reaching out to the dead um, and coaching in that way, that I find very unethical. But helping somebody through the the morning and everything, not at all unethical at all. But yes, if that's where it gets a little gray area is is the, are you contacting the other side element? We're life coaches, not death coaches. Death. (laughs) Coach, that's the name of my metal band. <laughs> um, um, see, well, where we're kind of blurs the line, though, is like if you're like a religious coach, for example, like we have. Is, um, there's a weird line there. I'm there's sure. a lot of you know Christian coaches out there and other 
religions out there. So where you draw the line of coaching for the dead or mourning might overlap with somebody's spiritual practice. Where in that case, um, you know, it's probably more okay. But if I'm charging people $5,000 to talk to their departed loved ones, then that's, that's a no go for me. That's that's where you draw the line. That's well, it's, it's, it's a space that's hard to traverse, right? It is. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say, I mean, ideally, I mean, what you as a coach are looking to do is serve your client, right? And if your client comes to you for that specific niche, um, <laughs> I, I couldn't say that. You know, it definitely is taboo. But I mean, again, you're serving your well, client you, something they're subscribing to. Um, true, and that's the question. It's a weird, fuzzy line because, like, but when are you coaching? When are you not coaching? Right. Yeah at yeah. that point um yeah, because of a lot, because if we're talking strictly icf coaching we got to be yeah. forward oriented and goal-minded a lot of the death and mourning coaches i've seen online don't focus in that space they talk about healing and they talk about you know trauma and like sort of more in depth the grieving process which feels on the borderline of yeah to me the queen left the queen left Queen's um. gone. <laughs> that to me is what comes to mind when I hear taboos of coaching is when you are no longer coaching, when you're moving mm-hmm. into that space that you were kind of mentioning. Well, about. and that's what the big the big headline of this is that we're going to be talking. This is a lot of non-ICF space, right? Mm-hmm. This is a lot of um, of other space that we're in. Uh, so so big, big. T- the other caveat is is when we talk about this, it's probably a lot of times not going to be in the realm of what ICF would call straightforward, straight. Yeah. Type. Now, now I think about it, it's more so it's just taboo not to be ICF. Don't do it. Yeah, pretty much, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's probably more of the issue here is that it becomes something that's not really coaching as we agree upon. Um, and if you disagree, tell us. Go ahead. Go post in the comments. I dare you. <laughs> someone, says, I'm a, someone said, I'm a death coach. Um, but I, I'm assuming, I mean, we could, I could be wrong now, that it's, it's uh, you're helping people move forward through that space of, of uh, and doing what coaches do. So um, also, also, my brain just gone. It's because it's, it's the dress is the Joker. I can't and think. We were looking at stuff. Brooke sent us a whole bunch of stuff to look up as well. It was interesting the different uh, people in niche mm-hmm. concepts that they were putting themselves out there, and the different articles people were writing about. Some that like had absolutely no clue what being a certified life coach is about, and then others touting all kinds of amazing things. <laughs> It's kind yeah, of it's kind of of yeah. Now let's let's move out of the death realm. Let's talk about cuddle coaching. Can we talk about cuddle coaching for a minute? That, I That's had a really good thing. <laughs> Honestly, that was like the first thing back back in like because I became a coach in 2011. So like around t- 2009, 2008, I heard something about that, and I'm like, what in the world? It's who there's a cuddle coaching, and it, these are people. There's a big line we have to walk here in the cuddle coaching space. Um, because uh, is it genuinely? I think somatic coaching, things like that, are these things really coaching? What point are you crossing when you're actually cuddling with somebody? Is that no longer coaching? I mean, come on, well, really, I mean, I think not coaching. It, <laughs> it, um, it's, I think as weird as it is, it also sounds very funny and I would like to try it, um, as a joke, <laughs> but as weird as it is, um, is, it just kind of seems like a medium to facilitate coaching. Yes, it does. That's all it, does. it is. If, if you're, if you, the cuddler and the cuddly both agree that, you know, this is all it is, this is the activity <laughs> we participate in while we coach. They have a big I don't see anything wrong yeah, with it, like I, compared to like coaching, you know, when you're going for a walk with your client or coaching in a different location or doing like exercising and coaching at the same time. Yeah. I don't see that much of a difference. It's just I, there's so many things that could go south. Like there's so many like, yeah. 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 Contracts are critical, I think, in this space. Very critical. I mean, just think about like 
are they, you know are they actually sleeping with them is my my next question do they actually sleep with the clients no, or are they just cuddling that i mean like no they're um, cuddling and coaching like they're having a coaching like, like i'm just gonna hold you while we talk yeah well okay I, I can see that i mean especially for maybe folks that have like some kind of thing around being Holding, touched or something light, like that yeah that could be light petting Mm -hmm. The article, one of the articles I read years ago, it's not current, so I don't even, I don't have all the details, don't remember exactly, but what I do remember in there, this one lady was talking about having a cuddles coach because her husband was in the military and hadn't seen him for years and just wanted to have some connection without having connection if that makes sense they just needed some physical touch so i have given permission for this other man to cuddle with you well no, not man it wasn't yeah that was a woman okay yeah. well of course he's into it <laughs> i mean but not that that's any better necessarily but <laughs> okay reminding you guys that we said this is adult conversation yeah. <laughs> Um, I was about oh, to say, like, there's a lot of stories where that goes the other way when somebody's looking for comfort while their uh, spouse is away. But I suppose cuddling. Yeah, I mean, I guess that, that that's a more acceptable, honest, and straightforward way to do things. Where is mm -hmm. the coaching coming in, though? Is my like really my question? Is no, like you cut you cuddle and talk at the same time. Yeah, there, <laughs> there wasn't talking in this space. Yeah, in in the one you're speaking of. Yeah, not the one I was talking about. But I mean, I can see that happening. That. Not in this particular example. Definitely not a virtual option in the cuddle coaching space. <laughs> it's actually funny that one article of the guy, um, I sent a photo of the guy just like staring uh, <laughs> at his phone page. He says there's virtual and online options as well. Um, so how do you virtual, virtually cuddle someone? Like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Like, so weird. Well, I do know everybody has a relation. I mean, you know, that they have their iPads and tablets and everything open and you're oh. just right there together. There is, I was reading recently that there is, um, there is something too. So people, we as people respond to touch. We respond to touch very well. And it's very important to us. And, and actually like the act of physically touching someone can develop or, or destroy trust very quickly. But we also doing things like putting our hands over our heart or putting our hands where we actually take a moment and, and consciously think about touching ourselves and, and touching ourselves in a specific way. And I'm, this all sounds... Um, uh, um, We're not onto that topic yet, Brooke. Hold on. Uh, it, it, but it can, it can do things like, like calm you down. It can yeah. anchor you. It can make your whole body sort of physiology change by the act of just you actually taking a moment to touch yourself. <laughs> I'm 12, I'm 12 years old. <laughs> um, oh. so, so cuddle coaching is, do you think, and I see if somebody got certified with us and they're like, I want to be a cuddle coach and they go to the ICF, do you think the ICF is going to accept it? Well, I don't think the ICF is asking what people's niches are, right? They I don't think they are. Yeah, they wouldn't, actually, they wouldn't even know, really. Because you would submit the coaching. Um, yeah, you're not going to submit that. that. It, no, yeah. There's no, there's no video, so they can't. Yeah, there's hear no video. It's an audio recording <laughs> of the coaching session, so all you hear is the cu the actual coaching. The cuddling. The cuddling. <laughs> you don't hear the cuddling. That'd be <laughs> I can imagine just like an actress in the notes, and it says wraps arm around waist or something. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Um, another weird, weird or strange or off the cuff kind of coaching. Well, from moving from cuddling, the natural next step would be sex coaching, <laughs> but not actually that taboo. Really, in truth, it's really, really yeah. not. Yeah. It's just like the concept of it, the thought of it is that, like, the moment we say sex, the word sex comes out of our mouths. It's like, <gasps> to, well, and the know, internet couple. like puts all these constrictions on that as well. So One so of the, um, she wasn't a coach. She's more. A therapist, um, Barbara DeAngelis. One of the things I liked about back in the day, I don't know, it was eighties, nineties, when I used to go and hang out and do her trainings, um, she would open up the floor, and we we're all women in that room in that time, in that particular. I forgot what, what she called it. And she would open up the floor for any question, any whatsoever question um, women had about that sexual content and some really interesting things came out and some really um 
think people didn't know about a lot of stuff. <laughs> what do you mean by didn't know like like oh just like simple things but that's not coaching though right at that point though she's at that sharing. point that was not coaching but it also wasn't that's a teaching moment yeah mm -hmm. but yeah. was it a coaching session that this happened in or was this like some other sort of it was group coaching I, I think. yeah it's like a, a a question answer frequently asked question in that in that world but what kind of mean, frequently asked that, question like, of what what coaching would be for mm -hmm. a for, so if I'm a client and I'm coming in and I want to I want to be coached in something in this sex department, what what kind of uh, sex related you know goals topics might I bring? Maybe it's that I am have an aversion. Maybe it's that I'm I have an aversion to being physical with people, and yeah. I want to be coached through that process to a space where I can comfortably. Uh, be that with somebody. Maybe it's a libido thing. Maybe it's a, there's a number of things that could come in to play, right? That, well, that's, you're, that's a very fine line to play with the therapy and, you know, yes, yes, yes. Well, maybe I want to explore new things. No. I want to, I have a, uh, a, there's a bunch of new things in the sex department I'd like to explore and I want a coach to help me make sure I do it and do it in a timely manner. <laughs> nice. And I can't yeah. even imagine. <laughs> I would think that a lot of couples coaches that yep. overlaps a lot with the well, sex yeah. thing because yep. a but lot not, of, that's not that kind of interaction typically for yeah for I think more of like there's a problem in the bedroom whereas maybe one person is wanting more than the other person how do we sort of resolve this dispute or yeah, issue? That's, that's usually the conversation. Coaching to yeah. sort of, um, I, honestly, it's something that comes up in marriage and in, in all of that, though, right? It's not, not not to be heard of. Lisa, mm -hmm. you shouldn't be able to attest to such things. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, my, there's a lot of though, there is one big element here that we, we're not also not considering, and that is um, there's a realm of shame that comes with sex. There's a lot, uh, shame can very much be wrapped around and, and involved in the, the, that space. And, um, I know, I know a coach that, that she, she is a, basically like a gender neutral coach. She's about, she's about breaking the bounds of gender when it comes to sexuality. Cause a lot of times we play roles, um, and it's about how she, you can be any role you want and, and exploring that. That's sort of her format and it's a different kind of thing but but she deals with a lot of people who have a lot of shame like um I, 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 people who are transitioning people who are these kind of things can can bring up a lot of shame when it comes to, to that department and i think she's does tremendous work so yeah yeah well but even i, mean, I think everybody can have that shame in a relationship when one person is um, you know not in the same place as the other one like one's wanting it more than the one other one the other one is is <laughs> completely vanilla. <laughs> um, uh, yes. <laughs> that's where shame might be a good that's thing. That's where lying comes in. That's where these things where where there are moments in relationships where it's like I just don't tell or say what I want because and then I'm going to spend the rest of my relationship sort of never feeling satisfied and that could be very a tough place to be in. So it's very important. We have uh, is a part of coach relationship coaching from several aspects intimacy reaching orgasm yes exactly exactly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but still could be considered a little bit taboo or a little bit you know let's talk more about sex <laughs> say, the more taboo example would be like i i think I would, i'd see this like on like mtv or vh1 like in the early 2000s is like the pickup artists Mm -hmm. Oh God! That's that, that like, the NLP right there, because uh, that's the NLP that they're using in that. Uh, <laughs> that's what I was just telling you guys earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would see that a lot, where it's like, oh, like I'm a sex coach, but more like a pickup artist coach, and I help virgins who've never, you know, <laughs> virgin men in their like late twenties and thirties, like go out. Well, they and did, you know, get some. <laughs> That's, that's what that book was that I was telling you about. That was, yeah, that, that, which is what the pickup artist is based on. Is that book? Yeah. Is there, um, so not was that again, the name of it? Was that I can't remember. Was that the name well, of it? No, they did a show on TV. Uh, I, I think was, it's like, called these. It's not called the secret. It's called. And he would give them like ridiculous secret. hats to wear. Yeah. And it was, <laughs> was a journalist who went in to experiment. He had heard about this group. And um, basically infiltrated it and followed their lead. I, I totally cannot remember the name I of it. I love that. 
I once met a coach who was a relationship coach for BDSM couples. There's a lot that goes on in that world, in that space, in the sense that that it's a lot of trust has to happen and there's mm-hmm. not a lot of respect. And I could see why some coaching would be a good thing for sure. Absolutely. I mean, that's your niche. There's no no shame, no harm to it. Do it. <laughs> um, I'm all for it. Like, I love weird and, odd and uh, the more the merrier. Um well, that takes us into the this realm, which which is this is kind of taboo for us to be talking about being taboo because I have even gotten into not arguments, but had discussions with folks who very much ascribe to this. So when we go and talk about these things, we're not having a judgment here. We're not saying that it's good or bad. We're not saying that you should or you shouldn't. We're simply discussing what it is, how it works, and, and what our thoughts are. But it it is not a judgment on anybody, but um or 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 the the things that they hold to be true. So that the reason I say this is NLP, because the folks who are, are NLPers are very, very hardcore NLPers. But it has essentially been debunked as a pseudoscience. Uh um uh, and so that is it's an interesting space to be in, but it's also sort of based in manipulation. Like the whole thing is it's centered around manipulating people and um, uh, using your word, your language and your your linguistics to manipulate a situation. And so to me, that is a very kind of taboo space to be in, especially as a coach. Right. Um, Thoughts. I was going to ask, couldn't lying just be NLP? Like I'm using language to deceive someone. Is that. Well, I don't Does think that that's the definition of NLP. NLP is not, the definition is not using language to, well, you said manipulate. So I don't think manipulation is in the definition of NLP, but um, in my definition. It, it kind of is implied in some ways, though, really and genuinely is, because it's about changing the way you think, the way others think, act, or behave using words, a lot of times not with their knowledge, which is weird. <laughs> um, right. Well, that's kind of the thing. When you're going to an NLP practitioner, you're you are an awaring, awaring. A new word. You are aware that you're going to an NLP practitioner. When someone is secretly trying to manipulate you, I'm trying to find that book that I' not proud to have read, but it actually gave me a really different insight to what that was for that experience. But when you're going to a practitioner, it's a a form in that sense where you're doing a a self-hypnosis exchange where that NLP practitioner is leading you. They call it uh, Jedi mind tricks. Well, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Learning NLP is like learning the language of your mind. This is from NLP.com. Let's make it simpler. Um, uh, so the way they break it down, they go, no neuro means it's, this is the physical components of your emotional and mental mm-hmm. well-being, your brain, essentially linguistics is the way you speak or communicate and programming mm-hmm. is, is, uh, perceiving your mind as an internal operating system. Programming is the way we, uh, we, the way our past experiences, thought emotions affect all our lives. So, um, it's, a, it's taking the programming and then you, Rewiring the program, essentially. You're, they're trying to re- rewire the connection. Um, the thing is, people do often use this. There is a whole fact, or faction, or a portion of this that is centered around using it to your own gain, right? <laughs> like using it so that you can be successful, so that you can make millions of dollars, so that you can get all the women in the world you want. Like this is a thing that circles around this concept of NLP and um, makes, therefore, making it, in my eyes, something that is pretty taboo. Um, it, it, in my mind, it makes it so that you're over-promising and probably going to under-deliver. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whereas... Yeah. Coach, if we just bare bones coaching, we don't promise anything. We're going to try to have a conversation to mm-hmm. get you on track for a certain goal in mind. We're not, we don't appeal to or pretend to appeal to like some sort of scientific like understanding as far as like ICF coaching goes. We are, you know, whereas NLP back, back in the seventies, they tried to scientifically prove this. And there's a lot of debate going on since the 70s whether or not you could actually prove any of their claims. Um, I have my biases towards that, but there is controversy in the scientific community about if NLP is even factual or not. Well, it is. I mean, I think that, that, that though it has been pretty much debunked as a pseudoscience at this point, like there's an official it's a, it, they've officially called it a deemed it a pseudoscience. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm, I'm almost 100% certain. I will double check right now. <laughs> um, you don't need to check. 
Um, but it's now that that now there that's not to say we're not again not discounting things completely. It's not to say there aren't areas that that they ask that there's truth in all of it. It's not to say you know that there are there are things to be learned um, in this space as well. Oh my gosh, there is like indeed. If, if the importance of language in terms of you know a person's like thought patterns, there's a lot of studies in the linguistics fields that suggest that there is like a linguistic determinism sort of like what language you learn sort of affects the way you view reality. So people who learn English and exclusively English are going to think completely differently from people who learn Chinese, not even on the basis of the culture, just the language and the words that you use, you're going to think and interpret reality differently. Kind of like how I think a lot of people say like, you know, the, um, Eskimos and Inuit people have like 30 different words for snow. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, mm-hmm. us English speakers, we got a few, like two or three words for snow, wet snow and sleety snow and um, hard snow it. and dry snow. Hard snow. And- <laughs> um, so you perceive reality differently based on the language and the words you use. So maybe if you change the words you used internally, how you think about yourself. Um, you know, yeah. I can, but, I can, I mean, we believe absolutely, that absolutely. And, and i think there are techniques that they use as well within it where you know it's about getting being aware of what you're saying being aware of how you say it being aware that the way you carry yourself and the way that you you your entire internal dialogue as well the way you perceive things the way that mm-hmm. it might be something that is a pattern right and this is sort of something that's based in your neurolinguistic programming is that you're identifying your patterns of thought your patterns of speech the the way and and then adjusting it for better, better or different results, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the, the where the taboo comes in is when we're using it to manipulate other people or get what we want from other people, unbeknownst to them, yeah. essentially. And um, also the the hypnosis side of it and the um, the subconscious side of NLP is where well, that's the unbeknownst to them part, right? Yeah, it's it's hard to prove that. Whereas you have sort of other techniques like cognitive behavioral therapy which has a lot of overlap, but that's more of the psychology side where Mm -hmm. there's a lot more proven results and you're consciously making decisions. It's not like this sort of underhanded subconscious, like, you know, skullduggery. um, Skullduggery! (laughs) Unconsciously choose what you do and say and then reinforce that behavior for positive results. I, um, uh, so, I mean, that's moving out that, I mean, we're, what we're saying is it, the, the pickup artist side of things, no matter what, all of these things are not really coaching. So let's just always return to that. This is not actually genuinely coaching. So, um, right. Anything to do but, with that manipulation that is not chosen. The element that would be coaching with it, that could be coaching is that if you are listening to the way your client speaks and you use their language back at them. So if your client uh, is somebody who used, uh, responds to visual cues. So you choose to use visual cues within your coaching to relate to them. And that is not manipulation. That's that's uh, speaking the same language, but it is something in the NLP space. I think um, they, there's also some visualization stuff that they do. There's, I mean, there's lots of things that you can do within it. Um, modalities uh, where there's, there's things to be learned. Um, moving out of the NLP space. Oh, I want to... What? Touch Go back ahead. on the sex coaching thing one more time because I read <laughs> something interesting and I forgot to bring it up is um, sex workers getting sex coaching certification is something I read on one of the yeah. sites that you put. Um, oh, I found it. Can you be a sex worker and coach at the same time? Well, not at the same. You can't be coaching your se- your, your clients. <laughs> I, have, like your other I, have, <laughs> I have a story there i have a story there i was in i was in las vegas um for an event and so what happens in las vegas stays in las vegas <laughs> <laughs> no but but they called themselves a, a couple's coach <laughs> oh and they were swingers <laughs> um, so i was sitting it was early i mean who gets up early in vegas you you like you stay up till early hours well i'm up at seven <laughs> I'm at this restaurant. I'm all by myself. Maybe way over, way over in the corner is another person. And all of a sudden these two people come up and like stand above me. Like I'm sitting and they're one's on one side, one's on the other. I'm like, what? <laughs> we're, we're here for the convention. Are you? 
I'm like, well, yes. What convention are you here for? The sex workers convention. I went, oh, may we sit with you? I go, well, I'm not with that convention, but yeah, go ahead and sit with me. <laughs> and we started clear. exchanging the information about, and they showed me this big old magazine. I mean, it was like an incredible magazine. If it wasn't about sex workers, I mean, it was really interesting. So we were chit-chatting and going Why on. Does it, I think it would be more interesting because it's about sex workers. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was speaking to them about what I, what I do. I'm a couples coach. And one of them goes, whoa, I'm a couples coach too. <laughs> and I'm not in the same way. <laughs> But, you know, they they felt that they served a purpose. They felt they fit a um, area that fed, fed a need of people. And most of the time when they were in their business, it wasn't only about the sex, right? It was about having a conversation where they the person that partnered up with them, they could have any kind of conversation. It wasn't a... Um, fearful yeah you know, if, I mean, they're making the other couple so if, if they're with other couples they're making the other couple stronger essentially yeah. Uh, yeah. through this which i can see that i mean yeah yeah <laughs> it was just very odd for two people to stand above me that i didn't know and it was like awkward and then we get down into the conversation of things okay so the book that i'm totally not at all proud that i read guys not at all proud that I read, but actually I'm grateful that I read it because it gave me a perspective that I can tell when someone's using that language on me. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it started that learning in that space. It's called The Game. Oh, that was it by Neil Strauss. Yeah, by Neil that Strauss. Was, that was the one. Yeah. There's a there's another book that actually uses NLP concepts that I actually quite enjoy. It's called um, um, Words That Change Minds. Mm -hmm. And then it's in the space though. It's not about um, uh, essentially like manipulating people. It's actually in a workspace, how to essentially how to, to identify how people are motivated for and what they do and et cetera, mm -hmm. like how what motivates that's people. Cool. Them. And so, um, that's mm -hmm. why I, I enjoy it. It's, and so it's, it's more about identifying what people's strengths are just based on how they speak and then, and then knowing where to place them if you're a boss or something. Else. Definitely a better book. <laughs> so you've used that book on us, Brooke? All the time, <laughs> every day. <laughs> you know i do <laughs> yeah i know what's another taboo coaching that we sociopath coaching is your coach a sociopath <laughs> perfect, yeah. that's a perfect makeup for this yes crazy um there's but she's got the perfect makeup but mine's really more more perfect yeah <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All you British people watching, sorry, we don't like monarchists here. Um, uh, so the, the the yeah, that's the thing with the socio that is that I reading. Did you read the articles uh, recently? I'm not a sociopath. <laughs> um, is is that they are? Uh, it, there is an inclination for some f folks who are in that space to become coaches actually, which is uh, scary. Right. Um, but it's because it's putting them, I think any places of power sociopaths are drawn to a, a lot of them are not power and money. And coaching technically is not a place of power, but they build it coaching. into but it. When you look at like the Tony Robbins and you look at the big name folks that are out there and, and the, the, they appear to have a great deal of influence and power over other people and they yeah, are able to get whatever they want, whenever that's they true. want. And mm -hmm. that is very alluring to somebody in with that kind of, uh, well, mm -hmm. with it, with the means to an end, which is what really, truly, in truth, a sociopath is a human being with a mean to an end and they don't consider other other human beings in in uh, walking that path and getting what they want. The moment you're in your way, they don't care. They're going to do what they need to to get back past you and get what they want with no regard. Um, well, they or, see other people as a means to an end. Well, yeah, they'll use people as a means to an end. Absolutely, and that's that's Which, the thing is it's it's the you are you are supply. That's one of the best way um, I've had it put is you are supply, and when your supply runs out, when you're no longer of value, you're discarded. Um, Which the sociopath coach comes in when they see their clients as a mean to an end, the end being yeah. more money. 
and yes, they keep you on the hook or they'll do all these crazy pyramid schemes that's where they're trying to try everything they can to get to the, the yeah. height that they want and that they'll, they'll maybe be willing to go to great lengths i think though in this space you as the client are probably in the safest space <laughs> um because i think that, that they're going to want to be doing a good job and want to be known for doing a fantastic job. And so I think that they that you are in the safest space as a client in if dealing with this. I think that everybody else in their way is probably at a much more <laughs> crazy. Mm. But, you know, that's Maybe. The, but but there is a theory if you want to make it and be big, you've got to be able to perform. And if you go if you're gonna perform, you gotta, you know, they are gonna know that. Now, mind you, there are probably some underhanded stuff going on in the process not always but um uh and so it's an, it's an interesting space but i think as a client it's it's probably you're in the safest uh lane <laughs> um, mm. <laughs> i disagree with that yeah, yeah there's yeah. a lot of gray area that sounds there. good <laughs> i feel like there's a lot of space for someone to pull a fast one over you if you're no yeah, well i mean but I, that's as far as coaching is concerned there's a lot of gray area there where um again i I think a sociopath coach is going to be the coach who tries to keep you on the hook and keep trying to coach you, even though you don't really need mm. the coaching anymore. Yeah. Yes. They're going to do yeah, everything they can to keep their income stream coming Those in. Yeah, first. Yes, absolutely. Um, so, so they're going to keep you dependent is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, they're, they're mm -hmm. going to try to foster codependency, and they're not going to give a damn about you because they're sociopaths. So yeah. you're just a – in an income stream to them so now that brings me up another thing though so just thinking here right um we are supposed to remain relatively neutral yeah and not care so much we can't care too much about so in some ways we ask our 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 coaches to be a little more sociopathic <laughs> like um uh, i don't know if being neutral is being sociopathic though no. Well, I mean, to be, but not to have an emotional attachment, not to have, a, yeah. you know, oh, attachment. I see what you're saying. Not to be, uh, you know, not to care what, how your client is doing once they've left the bounds of the, the, the thing, but to worry about your own life. These are all things that are kind of playing in that space a bit. Um, uh, because we don't, we can't be overly empathetic. We can't be crying mm -hmm. with them. We can't be, in, you know, worried about what's going on with them. That is, that would be something we would t categorically tell our, our coaches not to do, right? Yeah, I think, though, because it comes with a reason, there's a reason for you in doing so. It kind of separates you away from that definition of sociopath um, rather than you just going in and just right. simply not well, caring. How about you think that yeah. they don't have their reasons? <laughs> Self-centered reasons, though. I there's a difference. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I'm going to wear their reasons. I, I'm not sure, but I would imagine that it'd probably just be, they just simply do not care. And, you know, there's just a disconnect there from. I think that that's where that's, that's, the, you're not thinking of what a sociopath is quite correctly. Then okay. only so because um, a, sociopaths do have emotion. They do care. They do get angry. They do get, uh, it's that they, uh, jo they don't have any regard for other human beings and their emotions and their, it's that that part of it is just shut off, and it's it's. So, it, I'm looking at the def the definition right now. It's a person with a personality disorder manifesting itself in extreme antisocial attitudes and behaviors and lack of conscience. Yes, I think conscience. being outcome independent is a lot different than being um, yes. having a lack of conscience because yes. we require, well, the ICF requires coaches to have somewhat of a code of ethics and conscience. The sociopathic coach is just going to disregard that. So, well, will yeah. they though? They may may not because they. It depends on what their end goal is. What it's going to. They're going to disregard all, it. But all end goals are going to be self serving. It has exactly. nothing to do so, with so the They're not going to hold it because they're only going to hold it for as long as it serves yeah. them. And then the moment it doesn't serve them, they'll disregard it. And you don't want to be there when that happens. Essentially, um, is what it is. Yeah. So no, I don't think you're safer and better off coaching <clears throat> with a sociopath. I don't think so. I would never I would never said they were safer or better off. I just meant of all the spaces in in all the world, I think that that would be the one to be in a sociopath with. I, that that one it, it, it would be more safe for me than others. <laughs> so I was I was <laughs> interviewing <laughs> I was interviewing mentor coaches. I was looking for an MCC mentor coach, and as I was and now none of them I would say are sociopaths. I'm not going there, but egocentric, absolutely. 
whenever I called one of them, not all of them, but some of them, they had this, I'm lucky I got a hold of them. I'm lucky <laughs> that they're even talking to me. And I'm, I'm like, and you know, and all of this and a bag of, a bag of rice or something. I don't know. I just, I want a down to earth person. I don't want to talk to someone BS. all on themselves. Well, that's so on that note. So there's a, there's also this sort of fact of coaching or of in this space where it's about um, coaching, not, not the, um, the, the sociopath, but, but this concept of, of, I can do anything. Um, I'm a, I, you know, there's genius coaching. There's uh, when we talk about goal setting and huge out of this world goals, and then being in love with yourself and, and having the confidence and having the, that, that realm, I, I'm, I'm being of course, devil's advocate uh, as per usual in this, um, uh, the can be, can start to push itself to that realm of sort of like, well, when, are, at what point are we being narcissistic and just really thinking about us and when instead of more altruistic and, and um, approaching being happy with what you have, essentially. Um, and that there's a kind of weird taboo space that goes on there, right? That this concept of ego and, and coaching sort of is in many ways ego driven. Um, uh, whereas, um, that might be, a, a, there are other cultures and other realms of, where, where the, that ego, that, that wanting is sort of found on. Yeah. So well, I think the taboo in the coaching realm is like the, the motivational coaches or like the, the cheerleader coaches who are just like there to just pump you up and just feed you full of narcissism and ego and <laughs> just send you off. Like they don't really work on a goal. They're just like. Yeah. Yeah, you can do it. You're awesome and like you're the most awesome person in the world. Now go out there be awesome. Like that's not I think that, I don't I don't there's a huge deal with that. I think a lot of the taboo that comes along with that is relative to how you're starting to treat other people in that space. I think mm -hmm. when you can start, you know, obviously when you're a narcissist to others. I mean, you should I think yeah. we should all be great to ourselves, talk us up as, as often as possible. Amen. <laughs> but when it comes to, you know, you seeing yourself again when ego gets in the way seeing yourself above the, above others that's when the taboo really steps in well and i think well yeah that's that's the whole thing i think though too that even though we're working towards goals like we're everybody we as people have to do things like we're otherwise we would just be sitting like we have to we live a life it is finite it's there's a certain amount of time there are a lot of times things we want to accomplish within that time mm -hmm. um and the, the closer you get to the end of that time, the more you are aware of the, the, the time. <laughs> um, and so uh, I think that that's where this starts to come in is, is it's not so much about an egocentric kind of thing. Like I've got to be amazing. I've got to be fantastic as much as it is. is I just, I only have a certain amount of time to get certain things done and I'd like to be more focused. And, mm -hmm. and that's, I don't, I think that, 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 that looking at it that way, help, kind of, takes the ego out as much as it, uh, most people I think approaching it would be. It's not about making somebody amazing and, and a billion dollars or, you know, become this six figure, you know, what have you. It's, it's, it's about, you know, I, I've, I've only got so much time and I'd like to be productive. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thoughts? <laughs> Man, baby. <laughs> Sorry, I thought somebody was knocking at my door for a second, so I got a little bit distracted. <laughs> I would no, I'm not going to do that. I, I consider it for half a second, but I'm not going to go freak out my neighbors. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, you meant, or in the notes that you sent, you also uh, put in genius coaching, and I yeah. do not know what the heck that okay, is. Okay, so if you click on that, that is a weird space. So it's, it. this is, that was a weird space when I saw it. And that, no, I'm not saying anything bad about genius coaching the, the, or what it is, but it is essentially um, a, a group that if you have a gifted child, your child, you, or you think your child is gifted, they, um, you, you pass an assessment with them and then they will, coach your child to genius essentially and 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 that to me is terrifying like that is like stage mom hell like um, yeah, that's, that's tiger mom uh behavior right there. it's not your child the child at that point is not 
they're young one yeah. and two whoa are you that's a lot of expectation like yeah. <laughs> um and so are you coaching the parent or are you coaching the child you're po- coaching the, both both the whole family the child and the parents the whole unit is being coached uh to genius yeah, um, talk about not being attached to results. That's definitely that is like whoa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like my goodness, um, a little scary. Uh, I mean, I I just think scary for the kids. It's scary because that's a lot of expectation to be putting on anybody's shoulders. Like, um, uh, but I'm I'm, I'm I'm again no judgment whatsoever. I just at first glance, that's the first thing that went through my head. I was like, whoa, because uh, that's scary. <laughs> this, one, this one says is a dynamic resource to help your child overcome challenges okay. build on your innate talents and strengths to and realize all that is possible that's that's a coach but i think when you put the label genius in front of it there's a lot of expectation that comes gives a child, different perspective, right? like mm-hmm. what age is it appropriate to be coaching somebody that's what i was going to ask because you can coach teenagers mm-hmm. Yeah, like, like you'd, have, you'd have the permission of the parents and you'd be working with the parents. A nine-year-old, like, you know that, that somebody's got an agenda. I'm just saying. Like, somebody's got an There's an adult with an agenda in there somewhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and that, to me, takes it out of coaching. Am I wrong? Um, or the uh, agenda is not the kid's agenda. Well, not not setting... I want to go eat cookies and hang out with my friends. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta assume that's what's coming out of that coaching session, right? If you're truly coaching them, so yeah. Like, how was a kid setting the session contract? Like, also, well, you, that's you, what I'm reading right now. In this one, this one, it says we speak their language first, play, and then okay, we build we trust. First we garner their trust, and then we manipulate. Yeah. <laughs> and then we talk about their concerns okay. and then we encourage them to stay out of the box and discover who they really are so they've got the language there right for coaching but i'm not exactly clear on where the genius genius comes in there. As someone who's a genius and a, dressed up as a baby i don't approve <laughs> and that's my take on this my question is, how do you expect a kid to know who they really are I mean, that's that's yeah, a, what, that's such a what weird. What if this kid is right? fine with being stupid and not a genius? What if they're like, no, I I no, want to be no, dumb. I, I think it. I think it's a marketing term that attracts parents, yeah. but it looks like at least what I'm looking at is it looks more therapeutic than mm-hmm. actually coaching. In what I'm reading, I wonder what the assessment is, though. I'm curious about yeah. the assessment. Sure. Yeah. I wonder if I'd be able to pass. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, uh, I, but, but, but no, taking that, them out of it, like, like, I don't want to talk about that company. Mm-hmm. What age is it appropriate to start coaching somebody? I coach, I coach Cambria. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, like, it's simple. It's like, not like, charging it's, money to coach. Oh, well, I mean, it's my granddaughter, so that's not, what I, but. There are ways to help people, even young people, to have a different thought process. I think that's a space you gotta. Oh, I'm sorry, Lisa. Go ahead. But you're still gonna be. Co- you've still got to not not coaching a young person and not their parent is a big mistake. Mm-hmm. You've got to coach the parent. It's really you know like what's that the the dog trainer Caesar Milan is that yeah. his name? He really trains. The owners of the dogs, not, I mean, not he the, the dogs, but more the owners of the dogs to get their behavior different. Well, yeah, it's true. He's, tra- he's changing their behavior so that then they're speaking dog language. I think we're kind of, kind of dancing around the question though, because you can, yeah. let's say a teenager, you can sit down one on one, coach with them for like an hour. Yeah. How young could you go before that's sort of like, uh, that's weird. I mean, genuinely. Okay. You've Weird or not all, even all, like productive. Like, I think um, you've got to use some intuition in that space. Just kind of like if someone shouldn't be coached, they should be seeing a therapist. Um, and you know, mm-hmm. that I think you got to. It's there's probably no clear cut answer for that. Um, but mm-hmm. I think you there might, the there might have to be. Wonder, a is there an age limit on therapy? I'm curious. Like, is there an age limit? Like, when when is a child old enough for therapy? Well, that's different, though. I think that's like a sort of like. Yeah, it's different. Because the child has to have goals. They have to, if the child, if we are coaches, right? I'm just going to play this out in my head here. So I'm just mm-hmm. going to verbally out loud this. Um, uh, so if I'm, if I am, uh, 
the structure of a coaching session. We set a contract with our them. We, we, we catch up to them with them. We set a contract that we then allow them to lead us through until we come to a conclusion with the final goal of the contract has been fulfilled with this session, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm four years old, am I setting session contracts? <laughs> like, am I capable of doing yeah. it? Yeah. I think yeah. you are, yeah. Yeah, I think so well, too. I mean, I don't think the session's going to be an hour long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's coach. Come, let's let's try this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come here. Come here. <laughs> yeah, but I think you can. I don't think you do it for a long t period. I mean, it's not going to be an hour session typically. I think it's going to be a shorter session to accommodate the attention span of what wherever that but, cognitive. And Okay, and would the four-year-old know that they wanted coaching to begin with, right? Like, or is this something that like parents would force on them? Like, you know parents. What? It's all I'm parents. I might, I might flip on the subject. Like, I'm gonna look at Anthony and go, Anthony, go see <laughs> <your> child. <laughs> As I'm dressed, Man, like baby, this. can you be coached? I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna get on their level and be like, listen, <laughs> kids like to dress. Oh my god. <laughs> No, um, at first I was thinking about this like, no way, you couldn't coach a kid. But then I thought, well, yeah, if you're a teacher, mm -hmm. they're doing it all the time. Yeah. yeah. Become sort of coach, to have you in your use class. the skills that you learn as a coach, include it in your teaching, um, and that'd be totally like I'm fine. I'm great with kids because I, I get on their level and I talk to them like adults and like I ask them questions. Dress like, like them, though. No, I'm not, no, I'm man, maybe. Because then they think I was just making fun of them, so I wouldn't do it. But they probably yeah. laugh a little. They're probably. I think. I think, you can. I think it's, you should come in and see. <laughs> I think it's different. I think it's just different with the way that we work with children than we work with adults. It's easier, honestly. It's easier to work with children than adults because they're they will make decisions more simply, and just yeah. do it. And they're probably not like you know trying to. Uh, get a million dollars in a week or something like that that's not a kid goal really. yeah that sounds, so much. Kid. That sounds definitely <laughs> like, a kid goal. Just like mm, i want a million dollars okay how are you gonna do it let's do it i'm gonna do that <laughs> that'd be awesome <laughs> uh kid 12 year old becomes a millionaire with life coach <laughs> i can yeah. see that being wow. some stupid um, all right we're about out of time <laughs> Uh, I think we have uh, descended into madness. <laughs> so, so we've had fun. Today was a fun day, just a chit chat day of taboo kinds of interaction as coaches or people that are calling themselves coaches. I'm just having fun today. Nothing real serious. Thank you so much for being here. What? what? <laughs> um but yeah no i was just doing a quote it was a joker quote i was just that's all oh, i didn't hear you say it again I know. I know. the moment is over say it say it in the voice I a, I goodness. Goodness. I'm not why it's so serious <laughs> that was nixon doing a why so serious dress i know this is man like, baby doing nixon <laughs> doing joker <laughs> that's close enough uh Here's a takeaway. Uh, the oddball sections of coaching, the weird and the taboo, um, those are great niches. Not a lot of people do yeah. them, so that might be a good place to establish yourself yeah. and have a lot of return customers. Yeah, and to kind of add on to that, I mean, there's something for everyone out there. Just be cautious. Be, be well, I think you're getting yourself into before you commit to something long term. Everybody needs a coach, even mm -hmm. sociopaths. We all need <laughs> <laughs> uh, neurodivergent people need coaches too um uh but <laughs> that is uh i think that that, that yes, it's a good point there's something for everybody and i think that just know know the difference between coaching and not coaching because mm -hmm. just calling yourself a coach yeah. within the realm of cuddling within the realm of sex within the realm of genius uh you you may not actually be coaching yeah. at least yeah. by ICF's definition and that is yeah. what we ascribe to so if you're going to call yourself a coach coach um mm -hmm. if you're not going to coach within the space of what you're doing uh, don't call it call yourself something else <laughs> you can yeah, youth coaching as a skill set call yourself and a cuddle a tool. consultant or a cuddle advisor or, or a sex worker. <laughs> but don't call yourself a coach if you're not actually using the tools that coaches use because you're giving everybody a bad name 
I'm just saying. Yeah. Well, it just confuses me. <laughs> so, yeah. Don't miss that opportunity. Confusion. You're causing confusion. And then, but we could have a confusion coach. Yeah. As long as <laughs> All right, now we're getting off track. Confusion. I'm confused. We did that a few times. <laughs> Can you imagine that client? I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> Why do you keep asking me questions? <laughs> me neither. I don't know. All right. I think that about wraps it up. Goodbye, yeah. everybody. Go be Thank taboo. You. Go be odd. Have a happy, happy Halloween. Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Have fun. Halloween. Happy fall day. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you for sharing. Goo goo Bye bye. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning into today's episode. Once again, this is brought to you by Certified Life Coach Institute. We're an ICF accredited school who certifies our life coaches in three day online intensive courses. In addition to other podcast episodes, feel free to check us out every Tuesday at 4 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time on YouTube or Facebook for our CLCI Live, where we get together and discuss various topics that are centered around sharpening your skills so you can become a better certified life coach. For more information, feel free to visit us at certifiedlifecoachinstitute.com. Until next time, be well.